Hey guys, thanks for dropping by. In this video, we're going to cover how to memorize numbers, dates, and equations. I'm Paul Novak with Iris Reading, and we teach speed reading and memorization techniques. And because we teach speed reading, this is going to be a very speedy presentation. So, how do we go about memorizing numbers, dates, and equations? You need to use a technique called the numeric peg system. This turns numbers into visuals. So, the one becomes a pencil. The two becomes a swan the three becomes a McDonald's. Now, if you're wondering why these numbers are turning into these visuals, it's because they have a similar shape to them. The four can represent visually a chair. I know it's upside down, but you need to think in terms of a chair. Five would be a hook, six would be a cherry, seven would be a lightning bolt, eight would be a racetrack, nine would be a balloon, and number 10 would be maybe a bowl and a spoon or a plate and silverware. So you need to have these memorized first to kind of start using the numeric peg system. You can pause the video right now if you need to memorize them, but I'm just gonna continue moving on from here. So how do we use these numbers if we're trying to remember something? If you had to remember the date 1492, and you know some of us may have been taught that phrase, in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. What if you never learned that phrase? You take 1492, and the one is a pencil, the four becomes a chair, the nine becomes a balloon, and the two is a swan. We need these visuals to interact in some kind of a story related to Christopher Columbus. And they have to interact in that particular order because we're trying to remember 1492. So what about another example? Another thing you can do, what if you have to remember, let's say uh, there was 3.5% GDP growth in Ireland. Well, we need something to represent McDonald's for the three a hook for the five, and something related to Ireland. So you might have, let's say, imagine yourself walking into McDonald's. And for five, hooks remind me of pirates. So I would picture a pirate in the McDonald's. And we need something for Ireland now. So I would picture, I don't know why, the first thing I thought of was leprechaun. So I would picture a pirate and a leprechaun fighting. Now there's one thing that's missing here, growth. We need something to denote there's growth. Well, I would picture a really large leprechaun <laughs> fighting a smaller pirate inside of a McDonald's. And I would picture that story in that particular order. Does that make sense? Let's move on to equations. Most popular equation right here, E equals MC squared. Well, equations have, let's break it down, their elements. They have numbers, they have variables, they have operators. Well, the numbers, we already have visuals for those. And why are we using visuals? Because your brain remembers visual information a lot easier than abstract information like numbers. We also have to have visuals for all the variables. So X could be a run, airplane runway crisscrossing. Y could be a wishbone. Z could be a zebra. A could be apple. B could be something golf related. C could be Pac-Man or a cat. And then of course the operators. Operators represent action inside of our equation. So the plus sign could be things being stacked on top of each other. The minus sign could represent something being stolen or taken away. X, well not X, but multiplication represents things being multiplied. Division could be things being sliced or cut in half or a third or quarters. Parentheses could be something, a hug happening in the story or maybe things being tied together. Exponents, things floating around. So if you had, let's say, five square, you'd have five, the hook, represented maybe by a pirate. Maybe it's being attacked by a swan from the air. You could picture that as one aspect of your equation, and you turn it into a story with all of these elements. So if you had y equals mx plus b, you would have to maybe have these elements. Y, the wishbone. M could re be represented by mountains. X could be the runways, something being stacked on top of each other, and the b may be something golf-related. So what now? If you like memory techniques like this, check out our Speed Reading Mastery course. It goes over not only speed reading, but also memorization techniques. It's at irisreading.com mastery. It's a package of 12 webinars. Each one of these webinars goes into a lot of depth. They're 30 to 60 minutes in length. And when we first released this, they were $25 each. So, so this whole package is a $250 package uh, for people that are viewing this on YouTube. We have this listed for a $50 package price. Uh, it's a limited time offer. Check it out when you get a chance. It also includes a PDF on how to remember names more effectively. So it's a $50 package. It's a great way to continue learning memory techniques like this and also how to speed up your reading. I want to thank you for watching. I've got my contact information on the screen right here if you want to connect with me on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. And again, that follow-up course is at irisreading.com mastery. If you like what we're doing at Iris, please tell your friends about us. If you don't like what we're doing, tell your enemies about us. Thanks for watching.